So the M4 Mac Mini has been a very popular device since it's been released and the situation we're in now, I was kind of expecting it to happen, but I wasn't expecting it to happen this fast. So let me explain. So the M4 Mac Mini was released last year in 2024 and it very quickly became one of the most popular devices, well, desktop computers, whatever you want to call it, of 2024. And that was for a simple reason, which was the price to performance ratio you were getting. That 599 price tag for the base model or 499 if you're a student, when looked at compared to the performance and the capabilities you were getting and what it was opening up for people to be able to do with their machines for such a low price, it was really a no brainer as to why it became so popular and so fast. Well, 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 how the turntables. The big question people were having is the baseline storage on the base model. So 256 gigabytes of storage, is that gonna be enough for me? Do I need to upgrade through Apple? Is there any other way to upgrade? Because if you upgraded through Apple, that kind of budget kind of feeling and best bang for your buck kind of goes out the window. When you think about it, if you upgrade with Apple, that two terabytes of storage, it works out to be more than buying two base model M4 Mac Minis. So you do end up paying a premium and a lot of people didn't want to do that. So they opted for the 256 gigabytes and then a lot of people opted for external hard drives or whatever it may be, because that was the only other option. And then when people started opening up these M4 Mac Minis and soon realized that the actual storage components inside could be removed, they got hopeful. Now, I say removed because it wasn't very easy to be replaced. Because of the dimensions connection, Apple made it so you can't just get your off-the-shelf NVMe and place it inside the M4 Mac Mini and upgrade it and be done with it. That just wouldn't be very Apple-esque, would it? So that's where these third-party companies had a race to see who could be the first one to create an actual NVMe storage module. 31! 31! To replace the one inside the M4 Mac Mini and be a lot cheaper than Apple. And it didn't take them long. First we started seeing them for the M4 Mac Mini, and then we started seeing them for the M4 Pro Mac Mini models because they're slightly different modules. And I think on Apple's website, it's $800 to upgrade for the M4 Mac Mini to two terabytes, whereas these third party websites were selling these drives that they've made for around $300, $350, which was quite a big saving, and people jumped at it. Now don't get me wrong, I was also thinking, should I get this because Having all the storage on your device can be quite convenient and saving money is also a great thing compared to upgrading through the Apple website. But I did have some questions. These third party manufacturers with these drives being made so quickly, we had no history of the longevity of the product, the quality of the product, what the heating system is going to be like if it's going to overheat. And when it comes to having your all your data and your system OS on the internal drive of a product that you don't really know the history of, things get a little bit risky. And of course now we're seeing reports of people saying these drives are failing on them. Now I've personally seen a number of different posts online, on Reddit especially, of people who have purchased from these third party manufacturers. And now for a multitude of different reasons, they're seeing these drives not working, failing, corrupted data. And it's all well and good going through the warranty process, getting a refund or an exchange for another one. But something you may not be able to get back is that data. And that becomes quite scary considering when you have it on your internal machine, your system OS and all your other data is all in one place. So make sure to back up your data and back it up twice. Now in the grand scheme of things, it may only be a small percentage of these drives that are becoming faulty, but it's kind of worrying considering they haven't been on the market that long. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't get it or you shouldn't upgrade this way, it's totally up to you but hopefully this gives you awareness of the possibilities that could happen. So I would highly suggest back up your data, back it up twice to avoid at least minimal risk of losing the important data that you could lose. Now I've always been an advocate of getting an external drive and buying an external NVMe, putting it in that and using that for your storage and running from that, for example, editing. That's exactly what I do because my M4 Mac Mini or M4 Pro Mac Mini is the 512 gigabyte version. And I only use around 90 gigabytes. That's the bare necessities apps that need to be on the machine. All the other storage I use is gonna be on a Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 external enclosure with an NVMe drive. And I feel like this is a much better option. And I'm gonna explain why I feel like this is a better route to go right after this sponsored segment by Amazon because they're having an event which is gonna save you a bunch of money and it came at the perfect time. I think it's safe to say we all like to buy tech products and we all love a great deal. So it's a good thing that Amazon Tech Week is here right now 
With all your favorite tech products at a great deal, you're not gonna wanna pass up. So here are some of my own top picks. This smart scale shows everything on your phone using an app, keeps data saved for an easy way to see your progress, and it's 44% off. You can get these Soundcore Q30 headphones for 40% off. Or if you prefer in-ear headphones, you can get these Soundcore P20i wireless earbuds that are also 47% off. Now there are also some great savings on storage, so you can finally get that two terabyte or four terabyte NVMe SSD. Samsung Tab A9 Plus currently 35% off, and this solar powered security camera is 50% off, and there's so many more deals. So remember to like and comment down below if you find some really good deals, because it can help me out and help you out at home for other viewers. Remember to use the links in the description box and the pinned comments, and that'll take you directly to the Tech Week page, as well as my Amazon storefront, where you can see the deals I've catered to myself. Now I think it's time I go shopping as well because some of these deals that I've seen are gonna be very hard to pass up. Now, like I said, I've been an advocate of getting the external storage option for the M4 Mac Mini instead of upgrading the internal one. And that's for a couple of different reasons. Now, let me show you some of these storage options I've got here. So the first one is a RayQ dock. So inside this little section here, it actually opens up and you can put your own NVMe SSD in there. You plug this into the back of the M4 Mac Mini and then the M4 Mac Mini sits on top of that and it looks like one piece, it's a nice option. You have Thunderbolt 4 ones and Thunderbolt 5 ones, which the Thunderbolt 5 one just gives you a faster storage speed, but don't worry, the Thunderbolt 4 ones are also very fast. Now, if you don't wanna go that route, you can also go, for example, a Thunderbolt 5 NVMe enclosure. This one's by Acasis, and it's very simple. You open it up, put your NVMe SSD inside, and then when you close it up, you just plug in the Thunderbolt 5 cable and then plug it into your Informic Mini. And then you can take this, it's portable. And then the good thing is you can connect it to a multitude of different devices. You don't have to just use it for your Informic Mini. So if you have, for example, a MacBook and an Informic Mini or a third device, you can take this with you, have your data with you at all times while having your Informic Mini in one place. You don't have to carry it with you, which is a good benefit of having an external NVMe instead of the one on your machine because then the storage is just on there and you can't really carry it anywhere else. Now, just like the Thunderbolt 5 one, you can get a Thunderbolt 4 one, works in the exact same way. You can even get, I think this is a Thunderbolt 3 one. This is an Acasis one I used for a very long time. And as well as having the NVMe slot in there, this one has a bunch of ports as well, memory card slots and whatnot. And then if you really wanna go a micro or a small route, this is perfect for just transferring data to and from different devices. This is the Satoshi one, and this uses a smaller NVMe drive, you can see, as opposed to these other ones. But it's very compact, very small, nice to have in your pocket. It's basically an upgraded thumb drive. It doesn't offer you as fast data transfer speeds as the Thunderbolt 4 and the Thunderbolt 5, but it's definitely good for just transferring data to and from devices, whether you wanna record from your iPhone or connect it to your iPad or connect it to your M4 Mac Mini can easily do that and it doesn't cost that much money. Now all of these devices as well as a bunch of NVMe's, SSDs and whatnot are gonna be linked down below in the description. So if you wanna grab yourself one, if you wanna go this route, make sure to check that out below. With this Amazon event, you may even get extra savings, which is always a good thing. And look, I'm not saying don't buy these NVMe's because for some people out there, it's gonna be the most viable option. And at the end of the day, it's your money. And I know a lot of people out there are gonna say, even these external drives can fail. And that is true. Any drive can fail, it, possibilities are out there, but at least with these we kind of have a little bit more history on the longevity and the possibility of them. Now, the main reason I would say to go this route is A, because then you can keep your system OS on your machine and then you can just have your data on here, which then opens up the possibility of if you have a multitude of different devices, you can carry this around with you and connect to different devices and not have to worry about your data just being on one or how you're gonna transfer from one to the other. and Generally, these are very easy to upgrade and they're not that expensive. If you go for the Thunderbolt 5 version, the technology is a little bit newer, so they will cost a little bit more at first. But then once you buy the hub, that's gonna be the main cost and then you can upgrade the SSD as time goes on and you're kind of future-proofing. If you wanna go Thunderbolt 4 route, also very fast drives, the actual hub is gonna be a little bit more cheaper because the technology has been out for a longer time, but the NVMEs will also be around the same price. Now, like I said, all these will be linked down below. So if you wanna grab yourself some good deals, check out the description down below. I really do hope this video did help you. And I did, if I did earn your subscription and did help you in some way, do hit that subscribe button down below. 
Comment down below if you or if you know someone that's purchased these third party NVMe SSDs and how it's going for you at the minute because I'm interested to hear more opinions of different people if they're having any issues, if they're not, if the drives are working perfectly fine. And remember to share the video with your friends and family or anyone you know that might find this beneficial. Leave any comments down below, any questions you may have and I appreciate you watching, I appreciate your support and I will catch you on the next one.